What is up, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Breathe and Air podcast, where everyday action meets extraordinary mindset. Today, we have Corey Boutwell coming from Australia. He is a WBFF pro. He has his hand in Eternum Labs, which is a supplement company that we will talk about. And he is also the podcast host of About Wellbeing podcast, which he has pumped out 80 episodes in a short period of time. So, Corey, thank you so much for joining the show. Oh, thanks for having me on, Mason. Yeah. So we kind of just connect. The world's crazy. You connect with people and the Internet's crazy, too. And I think that everything happens for a reason. There are no such things as coincidences. So it's awesome to have a like minded individual like yourself sitting down and have a kick ass conversation. So tell me a little bit about yourself, um, you know, how you got into wanting to live as the highest version of yourself? Oh, dude. Well, as most people, well, I'm not sure if most people, but majority <laughs> of people, obviously, when they experience something bad, I feel like, well, some, some people have to experience something bad in order to like pull the bow back to shoot the bow to really allow themselves to like live an awesome life. And I grew up singing and dancing, acting, praised to be like a, like a world famous actor, like through my whole childhood, that was sort of, the the world that I was in and then when I hit like 16 17 it was like all right you got to start to work and face the real world now yeah. all of that just sort of crumbled all of these ideas and beliefs but throughout that time I so had it like stuck into my head like don't take no for an answer like that and sort of just always like okay you got to try and figure this stuff out so within like a five year I'd say five six year period of like <laughs> the the, the journey to manhood, right? Like in the hero's journey, it's like actually becoming a man. No one really helps us <laughs> right. but in, in current systems and societies. It's like, it's not really helped to like, if you read the book boy crisis by John Gray and by Warren Farrell, it dives deep into um, the process of men becoming men and how there's not a whole lot of guidance there. And we sort of just muddle our way through. It was like a five year period that was like pretty dark. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. great, great attitude the whole time. But like, there was no purpose. I, I sort of trusted in myself to be like, Oh, you'll figure it out. And then start of not figuring out had yeah. a small, small point in time where I was like suicidal. If you want to talk about that, it's great. I'm not like, Oh God, I was suicidal. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, there was time where I was like, tendencies i was never going to do anything but i just thought thought a lot about it yeah and that sort of just was like well i'm not going to do anything about this like and you need to do something about your life you've had all these dreams and aspirations like drilled into as a kid start living a man like take up responsibility and start kicking ass and i started taking responsibility started planning some shit out yeah start, started kicking ass man. <laughs> yeah there's a lot of there's a lot of things to unpack there i think one thing that sticks out to me, though, why is it that I feel like in modern society, we've lost a lot of that like twinkle of the creativity and the imagination and the like, I don't care what anybody says when we're little, you know, we're just over here like creating castles and wanting to be like heroes and superheroes and all these big aspirations that get crunched down. And it's like we need to live in that spirit, like that child spirit for like our whole lives that's what will keep us young i feel like i mean the energy yeah. gets zapped from you at such a young age if, if you fall into like the cycles and the pitfalls of society now oh man that's like it gets into this little um like leeway i really like researching philosophy and psychology like the old school stuff try to learn and take all the wisdom from all of the, the fantastic people and place it to modern life because it's so <laughs> crazy when you when you research or go down some of these old school rabbit holes when you find out how much stuff that they've predicted now to be correct and you're like what so in a book frederick nietzsche one of his in his book thus spoke zarathustra and if anyone ever tries to read it like if <laughs> you got to be 100 percent committed because that book is like it is tough like it's all old school language yeah anyway, the main i didn't even realize until i was like researching after i read the book the symbols of transformation sort of in it and he talks about this theory of we all start off human life as being camels. And basically it's like, well, why are we camels? Well, camels are in like, uh, just like symb symbolically speaking, have all this baggage put on top of them and like weigh them down. And that's sort of like our beliefs mm -hmm. with society. So society and like with what your parents say, what your friends say, the close circles, they're like, 
do this. You must go to school. You must get married. You must put your hand over your mouth when you sneeze. Like all of these different things have just put on us and we take them on board. The next evolution to like, well, he has this I- ideal just to set back is our goal of human, like humankind is to become the, in his terminology, over man, which is like a human that has overcome himself. And he believes that humans will get there in hundreds of years. <laughs> and it's, it's all psychological as well. It's just like a certain belief system. So to get to that, he says, firstly, we start off as camels. Uh, our next evolution is the becoming of a, uh, that of the symbol of a lion. And the lion's role and the lion's job is to slay the dragon called thou shalt, which basically in his term, he says that every single scale on the dragon has a belief system that is put on you. And it's our job as a lion to say no to everything and slay that dragon. And then basically the, the last symbol, once you've slayed the dragon is to become a child again, <laughs> which is very interesting. If you see like a grandparent when they're playing with children, there's like something very you know, special about that. But in terms of being to get to a child, he uses the example of the seriousness that a child has at play. Like they're taking the land of make-believe so seriously and they're having so much fun while they're doing it. And the goal is to be able to choose everything that you want to do. Like a child chooses things in, in the land of, in the land of play. Yeah. And that's as you was coming, coming to. <laughs> yeah. That <laughs> is awesome. Your point as you were, as you were speaking yeah. was to, you know, when you were talking about, um, you know, that where that wonder and creativity be, we just yeah. spend our whole life just unraveling all of these different beliefs that have been put on us just so we can get back to there. <laughs> that like, is oh, kind of crazy. Man. Yeah, no, I love that. I love the how you said the, like the grandparents, you know, with the kids, it, it is really like that. And you see the old, older people, they just shed everything. They're like, I don't even care what you think. Like, this is who I am. I'm old, like, you know, saying old, stubborn old person, like, no, they're just stripped down to who they actually are. <laughs> so all these years, yeah. they don't care anymore. <laughs> they're at the end. Yeah. They don't even care. Yeah. So they're, funny. they're 100% Dude. being them without. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, which is great. But it takes a while to get to. It does. It does. So tell me, uh, I'm interested in your journey. We talk, talked a little bit pre-show about, you know, how you kind of transitioned out of you know, working a job into doing this and basically following a passion from what I'm seeing. So how did you kind of make that transition as an entrepreneur and kind of some of the things that you're doing with your coaching and and things like that? Oh, it's actually quite exciting. So what I did was, oh man, this is just like, it's so crazy. Just having a couple of thoughts. (laughs) When, I don't know about you, man, but when I was at school, I didn't study. I didn't do shit. I didn't get like really good grades. When I got to uni, I did like two different degrees. I'd like studied aviation and that was ridiculously hard. And I tried my best as possible to, to pass stuff and failed subjects. And I was like, this is impossible. Yeah. But I went into a uni, like one of the lectures and they're like, all right, we're going to, I remember that this is a specific moment. They put a, an equation on the whiteboard and they like underived the whole thing and then put it back together. It's like, this is what the equations is the most important equation for you to learn. After the lecture, I turned to one of my friends and I said, dude, what's an equation? (laughs) He was like, you can't be serious, right? And I was like, dude, what the hell is equation? He's talking about all this crazy stuff. And I learned so much. I learned how to study during that degree, which is great. Mm, Then I I transitioned to business because the lifestyle of being a pilot was definitely not what I wanted to be. I was like, no, this is is terrible. These guys' lives is nuts and their health is greatly sacrificed. And I studied it and went into business and I was like, well, I'm going to tackle business with the same level of, study that I learned for aviation and I killed it. I was like, oh, okay. But never saw myself as someone that would ever study or like learn or, or do things, right? When uni finished and I got a job in a, in a government organization and I went into the, the government and looked at how intensely everyone was constantly studying for business. Like when you go into one of the, like like a business corporation, because everything's like, well, because it was government, it was like they're trying to save as much money as possible. But obviously, if you're in a private organization, they're trying to make as much money as possible. So like money's very scarce. So resources are, are, are very looked over. When you got into the business, when you look at the careful planning and so much energy and tracking and structure that goes into something to make sure that one project or whatever it is works as smoothly as possible mm-hmm. to get the most and the most effective and efficient way to do something. 
when I got into the business and did a couple of projects, I was like, man, imagine if you did this for yourself. And I never even like a thought about that. So what I did was I started doing it for myself, all the things that I learned at uni, all the like stuff that I was starting to read and research, I started planning it out for myself. And I was like listening to Jordan Peterson and I was like, well, I need structure. I need hierarchy. I need something I can climb for myself. So I started building out these theories that made perfect sense to me that I thought like this was really great. And I'd argue them and I'd try them out and, and I, I got really motivated. And it was like a whole bunch of different theories and a whole bunch of things that made sense. And for me, things that are practical and actually doing things, I don't know if it come from acting or something um, as, a, as a child, but like in, in, in drama class, when you had to actually act something out or be something and you'd feel those emotions, it really sort of stayed with you and whatever character that you played sort of it stayed with you afterwards. So when I was creating these theories and models and designs and hierarchies to, to, to be a better version of myself and, and compete at the same time, like I design everything out uh, like myself to sort of figure out how I could do everything. Once all of that was laid out and I actually took action on it, whether it was doing a small self reflection exercise, drawing out the model of a hierarchy and then, sticking to it like doing all the things that i said to actually put in there instead of just looking at it and taking a proactive approach man my, my the quality of my life just skyrocketed like really quick and i was like ah oh, this is what i'm supposed to be doing ah oh, i found myself again ah oh, this is me this is what everything i'm supposed to be doing this is great and the only thing that kept me through a lot of the dark times um was that five-year period that i was talking about was fitness crushing the gym and like thinking putting the projection on myself that physically, if I was to be better at anyone else at anything competitively, um, it would be how my body looks. So mm -hmm. I just did everything for that and just sort of ignored everything else. When I started putting this, these diagrams and models and theories into practice, it's like you're actually studying them and you're looking after your mind. I was going to the gym for my mind. As Plato says, you know, too much of the person who is an athlete becomes a savage and, and I'm not sure the rest of the quote, but too much of those who become a scholar end up being a nerd, right? So I was like, well, combine the two. And they sort of combined. And I never felt so mentally and physically strong in my life and able to just take on anything. And mm. as I started developing those systems and just like sharing it with friends, sharing it on social media, people started reaching out people started reaching out and then it's just started like getting quite overwhelming and the, and the quality of people started really reaching out like, well, dude, this is like quite ridiculous. And I was like, it is quite, quite high level, isn't it? Took like, had to overcome some self-limiting beliefs to actually think that it was high quality stuff. Um, but we got there in the end and then dude, I just, it just took off. Everything takes yeah. off. It's still taken off and it's, it's quite overwhelming. And I have so much fun every day man. <laughs> and opportunities sort of come. And like, you can tell like if you're on the path, if you figure out like who you really are and you do all of the self work, right? You do all of the self work to figure out who you really are. And you take a proactive approach to do all of the things to who you really are. Synchronicity happens. Obviously Carl Jung, it's just like, you know, you start finding something like if you think about someone, you see them the next day and you're like, what? <laughs> right? So synchronicity starts happening in, in the, in the point in my life where it's just like ridiculous, where I start thinking, okay, there's new opportunities come. I got this other stuff. Like, Hmm, I need some more money. And then I change like my thought process and be like, I deserve some more money, I think. And then I'm not even kidding. Someone would ring me the next day and be like, Hey man, I sign up for coaching. I have three other people literally call me up. Hey man, I need some coaching. I'm like, oh, well ask and you shall receive like there it is. <laughs> so no, yeah, you you took the words out of my mouth because I was thinking whenever you get aligned for the first time, right? It's like, whoa, this is what this is what life is supposed to be. And it's that is what I want so many people that listen to this to feel because what you're explaining and describing right there, like I can feel your excitement still because you're reliving it, right? And that's just, I think about the time where it clicked for me and I was like, this is a path and it's almost, it's, it's good and bad though. Cause this is, I've, uh, I've thought a lot about this lately. Like it's amazing because you know exactly where you're supposed to be and the alignment and the synchronicity and then things are happening around you and you know, the world is aligning the way that it's supposed to. And then when you get off that path, if you wander, dude, it hits you like a ton of bricks. You're like smacked right in the face. Like, you should, and then you feel so off because you're like, whoa, I'm not right. I'm, I'm way off the path here. I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Let me get back on. 
but that's a blessing to be able to know that and have that awareness. And, and yeah, when you feel that alignment, it's, it's unlike anything for sure. When was the best moment for you? So I did, I started this podcast and for those that have been listening, they've heard this, but we always have some new people. So when I started this, it was, you know, a part of me saying, who am I really that I haven't been sharing with everybody else? What are my gifts that I haven't been sharing with everybody else to leave a mark and an impact on this world? And there was things that I was passionate about and things that I was good at. And I felt like, hey, this podcast could really be a, an opportunity for me to not only grow in uh, creating a business and creating an online presence, but also in following what I feel like is a calling and, you know, learning along the way and meeting incredible people along the way and networking along the way. And I did a thing called Savage September. Savage September is coming up for everyone that's listening. So I put together this thing called Savage September, where it was like a mix of 75 hard. If you've heard of 75 hard and like a few of the other challenges that I had heard of, it was a month long month of September. And it was like no drinking, you know, all this stuff. Uh, you know, I always, I like to go out with the boys and have some drinks sometimes. So like, for me, I was like, all right, I'm super cleaned up. Like everything's going to be tight. And I remember, um, probably three weeks, three and a half weeks in, I just had one of these moments and I journaled a lot. Like I journal all the time and we can talk about that too. But I had one of these moments where I just got this energy, like this ecstasy, like bliss feeling just from inside, right? Nothing from the outside, like stone cold, sober for the whole month. And it was just one of those things. And I remember sitting down and writing in my journal at the exact time. And I wish I could find it right now to read you exactly what it said. But it was along the lines of, I hope everybody can one day experience this exact feeling that I'm feeling right now, where everything is in proper alignment. And I feel like I am on the right path, like everything feels where it's supposed to be on my journey. And that feeling right there, it was already the podcast had been going for probably five, six months, you know, it had been going for a while, I'd been on this path of achieving my higher self and meditating and taking care of my body and, um, you know, proper nutrition and all those things were always a part of my life even before the podcast. Um, but it just had taken a new role into like, being totally vulnerable and exposing everybody else that I possibly can to it. And so, yeah, that was, that was a big thing. And I just remember sitting there like, I hope everybody can feel this exact feeling. Yeah. And that'd be selfish of you not to share, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's something that, you know, I feel like we all have certain callings and things that we're passionate about, but it's, it's hard to sometimes follow it because there are all these external, external things that <laughs> you have to overcome. Oh, so true. And there's, there's yeah. so many and it, and I think, I think the ego has definitely some involvement in that, especially for all the external stuff. And what you find is that it evolves <laughs> and always gets better. <laughs> Remember listening to some Alan Watts podcast. There's a really good playlist and it's just like Alan Watts lectures on Spotify. If anyone's listening, something proactive for you to do. And you, it just has like binaural beats in the background. And it's just Alan Watts are some of the best bits out of his lectures. And I remember when I was uh, on a competition prep for a, for a show, I just listened to that every single morning, the same stuff over and over again yeah. while I was like riding my bike, like getting my cardio in. And one of the things that really stuck um, as you were speaking was he just talks about the ego and how it evolves. And it's like, it's sort of like thieves in your mind, right? And you have all this ex external stuff, whatever it is, it could be materialistic, could be validation, like whatever is just m coming up for you. And then what happens is when you get aware of it and you understand what's happening, like, and you're like, oh, that's this, this let's just use external validation for an example. Like, oh, that's external validation. Oh, I need to change that. Next minute, the ego will go up to the next stairs and then all the cops got to chase them to the next level. And it keeps evolving. And like, <laughs> it's like, you, you sort of never keep like figuring out until like the thieves get to the top of the roof and then you like, got you and then like integrate it. And <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> feel better about it. <laughs> It's a crazy thing. It is a crazy thing, but it's, I think it all just comes back to 
like realizing that everything that we need is inside of us already like to do whatever we want it's already it's already here it's already inside of you to achieve it um and that's just yeah we got on a spiel there man i'm passionate about that stuff it's awesome so you were talking about like when you're prepping for for contest anybody that hasn't checked out my boy Corey on instagram throw out your instagram tag right now where can you find him <laughs> yeah just say Corey boutwell c-o-r-e-y boutwell b-o-u-t-w-e-l-l on instagram and you probably see me with my shirt off a lot <laughs> yeah my guy's jack this is what i was getting to this is where he was competing in stuff he puts this stuff to work so tell me a little bit about what it's how it is like what's your routine like when you're when you are prepping well, firstly, I'll just mention as to like why I actually prep is yeah. I believe just like looking at old school Greek statues and like I just the way that I've grown up looking at heroes, always wanted to be a hero, wanted to be my own hero, want to be everyone else's hero is just looking at cartoons and different hero figures always had like ridiculous bodies, right? And I remember just as a kid, I don't know if it's a man thing, but you're like, I want to look strong. I want to look like king. Yeah. I want to look warrior. I want to look alpha. I, like, I want to embody that. And as a kid, I just made a decision. I was like, well, I'm always going to look like that. And it's just always been in the back of my mind. And it wasn't until I hit a certain age where I was like, I'm, if I'm going to walk like that, I'm going to have to start training. So, <laughs> so I started training and just fell in love with the whole uh, exercise and, and, and bodybuilding part of things where you can just see, see your body change, right? It's just like ridiculous. But psychologically, it worked for me. I let out all kinds of stress. It kept me extremely structured and disciplined. And now when I compete, it's sort of like, it's a celebration for what I can actually do to my body. And I like having a certain period of time when you're competing routine, routine wise, when it is really strict as going through all the fighting, like, like the mental battles, like for me at the moment, it's just constantly trying to stick to the food and like being extremely hungry throughout the entire prep where you're like, you're balancing all the meals, you're getting all your stuff in, but it's like, all right, I'm going to make this decision. Then your ego gets better for you. And you're like, well, I could fit this food in. And then you fit it in and you're like, ah, I shouldn't have done that. And that's that constant battle of trying as best as you can for a certain period of time to when you actually do get to show your body off and you do get to shine. It's like, it's a celebration of yep. so much hard work that you've put in. And when you're, when you pick an event, so I have this theory that I use called like the excuses theory that like I coach a little people, uh, a lot of people on. And it's sort of using the terminology of if you don't have the right motivation to do something, you don't have the right excuse to do it. So put some pressure on yourself where it could be like booking in a bodybuilding competition, or it could be like setting in a date, something tangible, someone holding you accountable to something. Like I'm just using examples for me. It could be like, for me, it could be booking in a photo shoot. It could be something tangible that I have to do. That's going to give me the right excuse to actually do it. And if you don't have the right excuse, you've got to go in internally and, and figure out a, like a bunch of different motivations. That's going to keep yeah. you disciplined to get you there if you feel like it's important to you. So mm -hmm. through having the competition, it gives me all the right excuses to remain as structured and disciplined as possible to hone in everything else of my life. Because during that time, there's no drinking. Like I'm not, I'm naturally nope. celibate because I'm focusing so hard and on stuff anyway. And I'm constantly like, my day is booked out by routine, like meal here, meal this time, meal this time, doing this. So with in the period of all the other times, I get so much work done. And because I'm naturally celibate and because I'm so focused on one goal, the creativity in my mind just goes crazy. And the energy that I have is nuts. But you get the, the, only, the only downside is you get too overwhelmed and you get too much of a rush. And sometimes you're like, I need to slow down and just check the quality of things a little bit. <laughs> Otherwise you're just too go, go, go. Yeah. Um, to get things done but the actual routine to get to your questions so i just had to explain that why so people understand no yeah no it makes so sense. many different reasons for why people actually would compete and for me it's a celebration of a ideal physique that i think is um amazing and when i get to look at it, i'm like i'm so proud like i'm so proud that i've committed and put all this effort into something crazy if i can do this and manipulate the human body i can i can do anything and i i, I really intently and strongly believe that. So how our actual routine at the moment goes is I, I wake up, I do like, I get all my subs in, I do all my journaling. What's that look like? What's the subs look like right now? So it's all this eternal lab stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, take, I take all the anti-aging stuff because I'm real good for my, uh, my, my cells. Like I take NMN with Veritrol and I take three to four capsules of Zone, which is like a, a non-stimulant, um, it's like a non-stimulant 
nootropic, right? It just hasn't got like caffeine and stuff in there. So it's like great to turn your brain on. I have a really high quality multivitamin and I have krill oil with astaxanthin. So I don't have to take omega-3s and astaxanthin just as like a big uh, bit of a um, antioxidant boost. And then I take a couple of digestive enzymes. I take multiple. There's like different types of uh, digestive enzymes that I take. And then I scull like a whole liter of water. (laughs) And then I um, get into journaling straight away, which is uh, three gratitudes. I write the same goals out every single day. And then I write the three most important things for me to do. And then there's space for me to like write any other notes. And then I read a page of the Daily Stoic, get around there, get my mind thinking. Because it's always hard to get into like like some high quality thinking. Um, first thing in the morning and I'm reading a page like, come on, man, let it soak in. Like, and I have to yeah. like write it out. And then basically I get ready to go for a walk straight away. I like get in gym gear, get sorted. I go for a massive walk and I get heaps of work done on my phone. So I do like reply to emails. I organize like this podcast catch up, all of these different things. I, I'm talking to suppliers, designers, clients, posting on social media thinking of some high quality writing email lists uh, email writing out emails like whatever it is i'll do all of that while i'm walking and going for like a big you know to a hour to two hour walk i get as much as i can possibly done on my phone in that time for everything that i need and then currently i'll walk to the gym i'll train i walk back smash breakfast and then like i'm on for the day and by then i've done like ten thousand steps i've done a whole gym session i've got all my vitamins and supplements in i've done my journal i've done my journaling and then from there it's like depending on what immediate work that i've got to do um i'll prioritize the most important work and then once i've freed up some time i'll get into some really hard reading at the moment i'm currently reading this the origins and history of consciousness eric newman one of carl jung's students and this is fucked <laughs> Sorry about the language again, but this book absolutely fucked <laughs> and um And then, yeah, basically I get as much done as possible throughout the day. And then I'll have like a sauna and ice bath on Friday. And, and yeah, when it gets to later on the evening, I try to shut everything off, roughly finish everything at around about five to 6 PM and then allow like a really smooth wind down time where it could be doing some more reading, um, always cooking the most elite healthiest meals as possible when going over some notes for the days Uh, around five, 6 PM. I like to get some creativity in as well. So I'll do writing a workbook, creating a program, something like that, where I actually get, get to be creative and then also hold myself back from it <laughs> because otherwise I'll keep doing it until like eight, eight, nine o'clock. I'm like, shit, I'm going to get to bed. And then I read something fantasy before bed to like help me get into a really good sleep and also challenge my mind. Something on the hero's journey. So I'm like using all of the stuff that we use out of like this book, out of the origins and history of um, consciousness and other different old school hard texts. I like to read fantasy books that resemble them or are based off philosophy. Like I do my research search to understand the right ones so that I can make certain clicks within the stories. And I'm like, Ooh, that's what this is. This transport. This is this transition in this person's life. Or this person has this sort of aspects to them, which is like the feminine side, or that's like the masculine side. And how does that play throughout, without throughout this person's life? So when I'm coaching someone and they're just telling me about their story. It's like, okay, I can dissect the whole thing and, and like map it out and yeah. we can talk about that and figure some things out. So, yeah. So I know you're, uh, you mentioned your frosty Fridays, like your, that's what we, <laughs> he calls it his frosty Fridays, right? So the, the ice bath, I'm super big into hot and cold therapy. I, I played football for those of you that are listening for the first time, played football in college. And so Cold therapy was a part of my everyday routine. I had two ACL surgeries, so I had to make sure my inflammation was down. And plus when you're, you know, training and training that hard, like you're going to get inflammation and it just helps the recovery. Um, I didn't start getting into saunas until a little bit later, but I love them, you know, to get in depth about like the heat shock proteins post-workout and stuff. But I actually had another, um, He's a bodybuilder, another bodybuilder on. And I was talking to him about saunas and he was like, he doesn't sauna every day or like every other day, really. Like he's, it's more sectional, like a couple times a week or once a week, maybe because of the hydration aspect. But I'm like, I'd love it, dude. Like I get in there almost every day for like maybe 15 minutes right after my workout for the recovery, blood flow, the heat shock proteins, all that stuff. Do you like the... Do you like do it like once a week? Do you like, like, how do you, how do you mix that in there? So 
one massive lesson that I've learned <laughs> because I keep self-sabotaging myself because I like, um, I like to go, you know, you're probably exactly the same. You like to just go like a hundred percent with something. Yeah. And like, I love the sauna so much, but a huge lesson that I've learned through bodybuilding and like through everything is to really listen to my body, like really listen to it. Yeah. And at the moment on a comp prep, man, I'm in there once a week, once, every, once a week and a half. Uh, purely because if I get into a sauna at the moment with the amount of nutrients that I'm on, with the amount of exercise that I'm doing, if I get into a sauna and I get distracted and I'm in there for 35 minutes on like a high temperature, like the next day I'm going to wake up feeling disgusting. Zapped. Like, yeah. like zapped. But in saying so, a couple of, I'd say a few months ago, I was in the sauna every single day and it was great. And like it, it mm. felt unreal. So I just kind of really listened to my body and it's like, today I'm definitely having a sauna. So I try to at least get one done once a week. When yeah. I'm on, it's on. And I'll take uh, like just a bunch of multivitamins, some electrolytes or a bone broth prior to getting in so that I have all the minerals possible to, to, to sweat all of it out. Yeah. And like you, man, I'll try to stay in for a short period of time because when I, when I first got my sauna, when I bought out and got that, I was like, this is going to be the best thing ever. And when I got it, I just smashed it too much. I got heat stroke like three, four times. Oh, like, no, wow. Why do I keep it? Nothing bad. Nothing like, yeah. real, like bad. Just like, I was like, I'm sick today. I'm, like, I'm sick. I need to chill. Because um, yeah. we'd, I'd just be doing something stupid. You know, we'd go in for like 40 minutes and like in an infrared sauna at like 64 degrees. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's probably like 160, seem, I think. Like, yeah. yeah. 40, it doesn't probably. seem, it doesn't seem that hot in an infrared sauna, but mine's small like really small and the heat temperatures up here. And when you're sitting in the sauna and you're like against all the backings, I'm like, when I put my hands here, <laughs> just like to feel the heat and up here, like there's such a difference. Like that is not where I'm sitting around all of these panels. Yeah, It's not 64 degrees <laughs> because I've been in uh, one of my friend's saunas. We hit close to a hundred degrees Celsius in a sweat sauna. We hit yeah. like 96 degrees and we stopped looking at it. We're like, we should probably get out. This is, this is really hot in here. <laughs> like, this is really hot. Yeah. So like that was quite ridiculous. I think that's like 220 Fahrenheit, something like that. Yeah, that's maybe. that's um, up there. Yeah, it was it was like that for a while. And I was fine like the day after that. But in this one, like we do a, a 40 minute round and then a 20 minute round and then a 15 minute round and then continue on our day, go to the gym, go for a run. Yeah. Like, like, it's too much. Of course you're going to get sick. So yeah, I just really listen to my body and whatever it responds best with. And then I'll, I'll stick to that. So, and I try to as well, I try to have my saunas before 12 noon and not actually have them too late for me personally, you figure out obviously when you're using them, if yeah. I have it too late at nighttime, it takes just too much nutrients. I find out and I end up not getting as good a sleep as possible, but frosty Fridays is purely dedicated to getting to an ice bath essentially as long as you can and what you're not supposed to do is jump in a sauna afterwards so you can soak in all of the cold benefits on that one day i love doing the contrast between both but the frosty fridays is supposed to be dedicated to just the cold therapy getting out shivering like crazy and, and dealing with that opening your legs so your balls get nice and cold <laughs> <laughs> all the all the good stuff right try to get as yeah. cold as possible and really uh, soak it in so, mm -hmm. and having ice baths, usually because you get a little bit of a cortisol spike at, in the ice because it's so cold, but having that in the afternoons, four to 5 p.m. for me, work out really well and I get some of my best sleeps. So I was about it's to quite, say. It's quite yeah. interesting. Yeah, instead of actually having a sauna later, I have saunas earlier and I have the ice baths later and it works. Yeah. But some Saturday mornings, you wake up, get a coffee and it's like sauna 15 minutes, ice bath a minute, sauna 15 minutes, ice bath a couple of minutes, sauna 10 minutes, ice bath a couple of plunges, get out. You're like, I literally, Zeus doesn't feel this good. You feel amazing. <laughs> yeah, you feel amazing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. The, even if people are listening, you don't have, you know, he talked about his best sleep after the cold, the cold plunge. Well, it's because your body, same, same reason why they say you, sh you know, you should sleep with it cold in your, in your house because your body is, trying to cool itself down at night when you're already cooling your body down with the cold water whether it's cold blast in the shower like last three minutes just turn on as cold as you can and just it's crazy because i i got really deep into wim hof and i read his book and and got into his breathing techniques and stuff another thing that kind of stemmed originally from 
uh, performance based on uh, for football for being able to control my heart rate and slow my heart rate down in the middle of a game and stuff. Um, but then turned into more of a spiritual practice, like, dude, it's, and, and we can dive in this is actually something I wanted to talk about. Um, I think it's super important because stress and, uh, running around in a sympathetic state 24 seven, um, you know, stress is one of the largest, if not number one, lar- number one cause for death because of all the diseases and all of the things that come from being stressed all the time. And we live even more now in such a go, go, go society, um, you know, with phones and external factors and everything trying to grab for our attention that, you know, the cortisol is high and we are constantly in a sympathetic state and it's the American dream, baby, like that kind of (laughs) thing. Right. But it's just crazy because you really have to, especially when you're pushing your body, um, you really have to get in that parasympathetic state for recovery and not just physically, but mentally. I mean, so many of us get burnt out on certain things and stuff because we're just not taking time to, to get into that state. So tell me a little bit about um, some hacks or some things that people can do to be able to tap on that parasympathetic state. Um, and for anyone who doesn't know what that is, just it's being able to, you know, get into the state where your heart rate's lower, you're, you're recovering, you're resting, you're not in such a go, go, go mode. Yeah. So I'd, I'd say like in, in terms of my approach to it is when I'm working with people, firstly, what we do is always understand that everything is so personable. Like you as a human being, your mind, your body and everything is as, just as unique as your fingerprint. And the way stress works for you is going to work completely different for me. Then there's different stress genes. You can literally get your DNA tested to see like how you approach stress. There's, there's genes that they say that they call like the warrior's gene. Then there's genes that they say got the strategist gene. And then you can have copies of both. So it depends on how you're actually dealing with stress. But yes, I think one is very important to acknowledge that stress is everywhere. But secondly is to understand how stress affects you and your like that could be your personality type it could just be who you are then understanding all of the stress that is in your control and then all of the stress that is out of your control so before even getting into any hacks understanding that on a very deep basis is so critically important that it gets to the point where you may not even need a hack like one of the one of the things that like i always say is um that I got out of like a a psychedelic experience when I'm coaching people is like a lot of things come down to just a conversation. And a lot of the time, the stress that we're putting on ourselves, let's just say not physical, like athletic stress, but we have a lot of stress coming at us just from life where it could be work, it could be a relationship. It could be something else. Usually would come down to just, you need to have a conversation with someone to clear something. You need to have a conversation with someone to like, it could be you're dealing with a lot of financial stress. Well, you may need to get a promotion. How am I going to get a promotion? I don't feel worthy. Well, why don't you prepare something that's like really important and actually ask and prove or do some serious work for like a month and a half to prove your worthiness and then have a conversation and ask for a promotion, which is going to take away all of that stress from yourself. So there's all these different ways that you can actually figure out of just actually dealing with stress by knowing who you are and knowing how you deal with stress um, like perfectly and how it shows up for you. And understanding like you know, just small things. Are you extroverted? Are you introverted? So how are you actually going to deal with stress? Are you more masculine? Are you more feminine? Like for me, just for example, using myself as an example here, is a lot of the time when I'm stressed and then I get bored and like a, or I find it hard to meditate, I just call someone. <laughs> like because I'm super extroverted, I did all the tests and everything. Like if I call to someone and just talk to them on the phone, it feels like I'm with them. I get to talk about all my problems talk about everything that I'm stressed about. And then I finish that conversation and I go, oh, I've just cleared everything. And then like, if I was struggling to meditate and actually get through something, if I meditate after that, it's like, oh, cool. Like I'm finding it a whole lot better. But just for some actual practical tips, I would say stop beating around the bush. If, you do, if you're someone who values optimizing yourself, being a high performer, achieving, being the best version of yourself, and actually living a high quality life in general is to use some of the tools that we are blessed to have. And I would get something to track your heart rate variability and I would get a DNA test like immediately. (laughs) Because if you're tracking your heart rate variability, for those who I'm assuming a lot of your listeners would already know, and obviously you would know, 
heart rate variability is just a great indicator and you can learn a lot about it just by YouTubing stuff, but basically it indicates how well your body is coping with all the stress that you're putting on it. If it's extremely low for your own standards, it means that the stress adaption is off. It's either you're being way too lazy and you need to exercise a whole lot more, but that's not heaps common. <laughs> and the other one is you're doing way too much. There's too much pressure on you and too much stress on you. So you need to take some time to stillness uh, for stillness or to energize yourself. And you can very easily see that by tracking. And then it's sort of, I would get, get a coach, I would seek out you, be like, yo, what could I actually do to sort of figure out some things that you can put into your routine that may increase your heart rate variability um, over the night when you're, when you're sleeping or, or something like that? Because honestly, having that data and being able to make decisions on that and, and just simply like, why would you want to do that? And it's to protect your energy so that you can actually go and chase after the best version of yourself and actually make your dreams reality is by tracking you just you're just cutting away you're just clearing out all of the mud in the water and yeah. it's, it's it's immediate a lot of people think like oh 300 on a tracking software device or your case it'd be like 200 like 150 oh, 150 or 200 on a tracking device oh no that's the worst thing ever you get it and it literally changes your whole life and you're like well i could not put a price on this thing now <laughs> yeah now i make three times as much <laughs> yeah. yeah well a lot of the time people do because they end up making better decisions um, for them, which is, it's quite, quite common to see for someone who's super stressed out that can't see a bigger picture for themselves, for their company or what they're doing. Yeah. As soon as they're like, all right, let's just take it back. Really look after my body for a bit. Let this stress not affect me. Let's put some boundaries up. Let's get our heart rate variability higher. They see something from a bigger picture and they go, oh my God, all I need to do is this little decision here. They make some small decision. Everything changes. And you're like, wow, this is quite fantastic. And they start making more money. They're like, I, I didn't even look at it. And I just needed to let my ideas transmute. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think there's a misconception of associating busyness with productivity. Um, you know, a lot of times it's like, I've been working so hard. I've been doing this. I've been working 13 hour days. Uh, I should be getting paid on the back end. Like I should be getting rewarded for this. Like I should be seeing more dividends from this. And in reality, it's like, yes, we need to work hard. We got to grind. We got to do these things, but Hey, there is a lot of things in place for us to be way more effective in a lot less time. You know, how much more productive would you be if you weren't on your phone? I'm the, I'm this too. Like I'll be working. Oh, someone buzzes me. The boys buzz or, Oh, I get on Instagram or, uh, how much more productive you put that down? What now you're doing this in 30 minutes instead of the hour that it took you to do it. Like that's, that's just some, some part of it. And you want to be a, as efficient as possible in everything you do. You mentioned there too, like when we're talking about stress, a lot of stress, I feel like stems from the workplace, stems from finances, stems from, you know, working too hard. Oh, I'm so busy with work. I can't eat properly or I don't have time to go to the gym or like these things, right? These are some of the excuses we hear. Um, I saw one of your blogs, so you can find Corey on his website at coreyboutwell.com. He also does coaching, by the way. I don't yet, so if you need coaching, go holler at the boy. I will answer any of your questions, though, I promise. But on his blogs, he was talking about um, Tim Cook, so the old Apple CEO, had a quote that said, sitting is the new smoking. And I'm feeling this, too, because my new job, it's tech. Everything is very remote right now. And even with COVID, you know, making this little comeback, everything is remote. A lot of stuff is remote. So there's so much more sitting, right? I read a fact that 78% of people that were in the ICU due to COVID were overweight. So 78%. And then now we are putting everybody away from human connection and closing gyms and doing these things as well, right? So it's a little bit crazy to me, but that's the sidebar. Anyways, sitting is the new smoking. Tell me about how if you have a remote job, you can still, you know, get up, move around. Like, what are some tips? Like, what are some things that we could do to, you know, keep us, keep, keep our bodies moving and not just be sitting, ruining our posture, feeling all tired, looking at a screen all day? Yeah, I think one of the main things there is to like the before the actual tips of doing anything is to be motivated to do so. Yeah. 
because that's like like the belief to get over like i have to do this so just using myself as an example when it comes to skipping gym that's foreign to me i'm like what what do you mean like in the back of my mind because it's so ingrained yeah right you get it right you just you just you just go like no matter how hard it is like i'm I'm moving into state in a couple of weeks and there was like i'm like i could be two or three days that i'm i'm traveling for driving and literally (laughs) i'm like how am i going to train is the first thought that popped into my head and i was like oh it's going to be hard for me not to train (laughs) I'm going to have to like, just be walking, going for some runs, stop the car and go for a jog, get back in something like that. Something stupid. Right. But, um, which is three pull-ups should be. Yeah. Three pull-ups. Shout out Sobra. Yeah. right. Yeah. (laughs) Three pull-ups getting it in. But, um, yeah. So I think the first thing there would just be to get people motivated to do so. And that's sort of like actually looking into the mirror and facing the cold, hard facts of people who do have a sitting job. It's like, you got to get up and move because, like, I'm not sure which one of the blogs that you wrote, but I wrote a blog and I did a podcast on hydration specifically. And I had a lot of people message me afterwards, just like, I can't believe that you have to move your water to hydrate. And it, it makes so much sense when I start thinking about the human body in the past millions of years that we've been alive, how much a human would actually move back in the day. I've been thinking about this a lot recently in terms of just like our garbage, right? Mm. How blessed we are to have like garbage cans. Like we, we go, we, we, we get a rubbish, we put it into a bag in a house, we take it outside out there, then a garbage disposal comes, picks it up and away with it, right? magically disappears. Thousands of years ago, we were in tribes. Let's say you don't want the whole tribe and camp to stink out and be disgusting. <laughs> like if you wanted to go to the toilet or do the trash, like they'd get things in, they'd either use it or they'd have to go somewhere really far away to get rid of it. Plus they're out hunting, plus they were building, plus they're doing this stuff like they were moving all the time. And that's why... Like they didn't have all the diseases. They, people looked, they were a lot, I wouldn't say they're a lot healthier because, you know, it was a times a little bit harder and we have a lot more access to things now, but they did have Western A price studies, like way better jaw lines and structures to yeah. prove that they had like a more of an ideal health. I think now there's, we've gone the other way and there's too much now, but in terms of we were just moving all the time. And it made sense back in the day as well. And I think about like, if you drunk from a river or you drunk from a stream or you drunk from a well, what happens is rocks essentially grow salt on them and minerals from the rivers and the tree and the trees and everything. Right? So we were drinking this very highly nutritious, mineral dense water all the time as well. And now it just comes out from the tap. It's been extremely filtered. There's not, there's no really near as many nutrients in there. Mm-hmm. But firstly, it's like, well, one thing is there's so much more nutrients in water and the second thing is to actually move it around our body if you think about it our body's like 80 percent water man like 80 85 percent water and if you look at the ocean or you look at a river or you look at a stream like if you look at a pond that doesn't move right it grows algae and stuff and then gets all festy and disgusting if you look at a a um a river or a stream or the ocean it's like clean it's pristine it's gorgeous it's beautiful it's clear it's exactly the same what happens to your body man you're a, mm. you're a stream you're not wow. a pond <laughs> right? i like that so, i like that yeah the more you move the more it's cleaning out all the plaque the more it's cleaning out all the stuff the more it's like moving the fats around the body the more it's getting rid of all the different toxins so it's like we're supposed to be moving all the time and like a, you know, like one easy hack that you can actually do is just get a step counter on your phone and i challenge anyone who's listening just for the next month uh, as september's coming up right for you i'd say yeah if, if, if you're happy to put that on i'd say hit twenty thousand steps every single day like try and hit twenty thousand steps like a minimum every single day and just notice how amazing you feel like it is you feel so good the people that are coached like man i've just been trying to like they're following me because i'm a comp at the moment so mine are like 20 to twenty five thousand. It's, it's stupid but i never would walk that much unless i was comp prepping and probably be more around like 18 to seventeen thousand. Yeah. but some of my clients are following me they're like man i've been trying to chase you and get you at like the twenty thousand. and man i tell you what just aiming for this and being consistent over the past couple of months i feel incredible and you're like yeah. yeah you do you feel amazing but the side effect to that is if you're not moving as often and you're not burning calories and you're sitting at a desk or you're standing, even standing, there's the studies that come out now for standing. It's the same thing. If you're just standing in the same spot and not actually moving it, it does the same, it does the same shit. If you're experiencing inflammation, if you're experiencing body pains, if you're experiencing bloating in your stomach, if you're experiencing anxiety or depression, if you're experiencing anything like, like mood disruptions, or you're always someone that's like, Oh, I get headaches all the time. Oh, I've got this ache here. Oh, I've got this pain here. Oh, I've got this. A lot of time it's like, well, 
you just need to get moving, man. You're a pond. Like you really are. You're a pond. You're a then pond. You growing. You're a damn pond. And like what happens <laughs> is the symptom of that is your guts get bigger. You, you feel worse. Oh, all of those different yeah. things. So I think it's just important to know that even if you're tired or lethargic all the time, when you do start moving and afterwards you always feel really good, right? It's a reward system for us to get up and go. Yeah. So I know it's a long winded way, but if you just understand and you're simply aware of those things and you put some little things into practice, like putting high quality salt in your food and your water, like high quality salt, not the other stuff. And believe it or not, it's extremely cheap. If you go to a health food store, you get Celtic salt or something like that. Not Himalayan salt, it's a little bit more expensive, but you get a high quality sea salt or high quality Celtic salt that's really high in, in really good minerals and low in sodium, table salt, high as in sodium, Celtic salt, low in sodium, in sodium, high in all the other nutrients. You replace that in your food, you replace that in the water and you hit, get a, a step tracking thing and you understand like, all right, to get healthy and to just feel like a million times better. Even if you are healthy and you want to feel even better, Start doing like 15 to 20,000 steps every single day. Track it and just see how you feel in a month. And you'll just go, oh my goodness, this is so <laughs> simple. This is yeah. so simple. Yeah. And like I said, as the start, little loop moment. When I go for a walk in the morning, I do all of my best work and get heaps of stuff done on my phone, mm. getting back to people doing things whilst I am walking. And that actually mm. took a little bit of a mindset shift in a company as well when I was working in an organization where someone said, let's have a meeting, let's do this. And I knew that we weren't typing or getting things down. I'd say, let's go for a walk while we have a chat or let's do this. Or I've got a, I've got a Zoom meeting on my, um, on my phone and I don't have to turn my camera on. I'll just put my headphones in. It's a great tool, earbuds, one of the best tools ever, headphones. You can go for a walk while you're in the meeting, write down notes on your phone, get onto it later. Like that was such a massive That's hack. awesome. So, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I love that. So even, even when I'm on a coaching call, if we're not face-to-face -face doing something, I'm like, you go like a lot of time, well, my clients are at me like, Let, let's go for a walk and talk. <laughs> but um, I, I sometimes it'd be like, let's walk and talk at the same time. Because one thing out of Max Lugavere's book, Genius Foods, not sure if you know him, but he just talks about the science of moving and the performance of your brain increasing. And if you combine both at the same time, you get really good ideas and your mind is super, super sharp, clear and focused. So him and his business partners, when they, they would try these things out, they would do like a light, sort of a light workout or go for a walk or something, which helps them figure out everything for the business. And another writer, I forgot his name, he's in the Waking Up app with Sam Harris. He was mm, some Irish guy really liked some of the meditations that he does, but he was discussing in there. He's like, what I would, uh, what, what he does, he goes away on holidays with a, with a close friend. If they're writing a book and they had some challenges, they'll go away for a month. And he's like, we'll do nothing month or two weeks, something like that. But he's like, we'll be, do, we'll do nothing but writing and walking and talking. And we get all of our best work done for like the next two to five years. <laughs> in those period of time yeah, yeah. something stupid right so there's just, the efficiency thing <laughs> oh the efficiency thing is like yeah so efficient right but this is just a whole bunch of different reasons right to do something so ridiculously simple that we should be doing and we get so well rewarded for it and then if you do get something like a, a heart rate variability tracking software like a whoop band or a ring or a, a heart rate strap or something like that where you can check your heart rate variability is you can see how well it's working man so if it's not just like the motivations to do it but you can track to see if it's actually working on software on our phones which yeah. is absolutely wild we're blessed man when we live yes, in crazy times we but like we're blessed beyond belief to be able to do all of this yeah no absolutely there's there's some important, I feel like the, even the water thing that you're talking about, you know, I, uh, I know I didn't even really dig that deep into it until, you know, the last six months to a year or so when I realized that, Hey, tap water actually probably has a bunch of shit in it that I don't <laughs> want in my body. Like, not only is it probably have none of the minerals, but it, depending on what, what your, you know, water system likes is like in cities, which varies like it could have the birth control that got flushed down the toilet <laughs> or whatever else in it, you know, and what's that going to do to your hormones or, and what, what kind of bacteria is that? I mean, so yeah, a lot of the water's filtered and maybe some of it's in plastic and that's even a whole nother talk, right? It, it, you know, it's taking in some of the plastics, which is a no, no too, but 
yeah, I've, I've totally got on the wave of purified water. If you can't get it from a stream um, or a well, and then putting the salt and lemon in it too. I, I like doing the both. I like doing both. I had, it's just, it's crazy though, to think about that, you know, because being so into, you know, the health, the health side of things and, and taking care of myself, like I didn't even ever even think about that until recently. So it's just cool to see that it's ever evolving. The things like butter, like eating butter, people are like, Oh, you know, I can't believe it's not butter. And it's like, this is so good for me because it's not even butter. And it's like, no, dude, just eat the real thing. Like eat yeah. grass fed, like whole fat butter, not the stuff that has all the nasty chemicals and canola oil and all the other junk in it. Like, it's just that weird switch. But then there's that side of things where health got to be a trendy thing. And people are like, oh, you know, the consumers are going to be ignorant here and not think that this is unhealthy because we're putting on it something like oh this is really good for you like that's just it's crazy it's crazy yeah, it talk about crazy. bone broth though because bone broth I've, I've definitely been on that for a minute and i think that the gut in general is your second brain and so important to you know hormone regulation your mood um, you know, you talk, talk about things like leaky gut and, and a lot of the foods that we're eating, the antibiotics that are being given to us and, and the way that our lifestyle is our gut is just wrecked to shreds. So I think that's super important. Bone broth is one of those things that's great for it. So tell me a little bit about, you know, I'm sure that you have some gut health practices and, and bone broth specifically. Yeah, it's probably why I take so many digestive enzymes. Yeah, exactly. I wish that was the way to like, like really test you know, like you've got somewhere easy other than getting like a Viome test. Um, yeah. I'm like super excited to, to get one, to be honest. But I guess you can sort of track it depending on what your heart rate variability is doing, depending on what you're eating. Because obviously like what you eat, like your body takes up so much energy just to digest, right? It takes so much energy for our body just to digest everything that we have. And the more we dive into it, I dive into, I did a course, Luke Lehman at Muscle Nerds in Australia. He's from Texas. Shout out Luke. He's an absolute wizard when it comes to health stuff. Like yeah. wizard, bro. <laughs> like whatever yeah. we ever think we learn about health, that guy knows like a million times more. It's crazy. But they just That's went it. into, in their course, they just went to really specifically like what happens in terms of not just digestion, but assimilation, which is like obviously the, the cellular stuff of what actually happens to food when it gets digested into our cells and then the chemical reactions in the cells and blah, blah, blah. Anyway, like what was, what was super interesting is just to know that like everything you put in your mouth, that when it is digested to actually have it assimilated is a whole nother process, like a whole nother process. And it has like every single thing that we eat that, that does get digested literally becomes our cells. Like it's nuts. Like everything that we do that gets digested literally becomes our cells. And I sort of believe, obviously, with all of this stuff that we can learn, interpreting it yourself and creating your own language for it is the most important because that's how you remember it. Yeah. And for me, I say to myself that, like, I believe that my gut is like my first brain, to be honest, because mm. that's where all your, like, there's a lot of neurotransmitters and stuff made in your gut. In terms, for me, for all the decisions that I make when I have, have a craving or I have self like some sort of self-control, you have a gut feeling, you have a gut decision. It's up to you whether to listen to it or not. It's like mm. your brain gets in the way and sort of, oh, I need this flight fright or freeze response. And it's like, well, if you listen to your gut, that would have been a way better decision. You know wow. what I mean? So it's kind of like, no, I love yeah. that. That's all right? sick. So I'm like, well, for me, my <clears throat> gut's my first brain. And I like to say that because if I'm following those instincts, a lot of the time, it always comes right. Like, cause mm. I know, I know that I shouldn't eat this or I know that I should be doing that, but I'll get like caught up in bullshit and the filters and I'm not getting into my prefrontal cortex and I'll make a decision that's not worth it. And I was like, my gut was telling me the whole time. So first brain. And Love it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> There's the snippet. Y'all heard it here. There's the snippet for the show. I'm, I'm yeah. hitting that one. <laughs> Got your first brain, baby. Yeah. We got it anti-pond crew and gut first brain crew like <laughs> yeah. um so so no, yeah which is good. Yeah. Su su super interesting and then back yeah. on the bone broth um obviously i remember when i first was researched first looking into bone broth i found it in a store and it was in australia our food quality is pretty nuts like we have access to some intense 
quality food. Like, man, if you come here, yeah. I'd love to like, yeah, you know, just like, yeah. take it and be like, look at all of this. You'd be like, what? In terms of just like natural quality, it's insane. And they have these, they had these grass fed, I think it's Jersey cows. So it's like the most elite quality. Best of the bone, just a shout out to them. Best of the bone, bone broth. And they had it in a jar. So it was all gooey. It was like oh, very, wow. very gooey. So it's not like a powder. None no. of this powdered stuff. It's full gooey. And it's like they're, the bones were from these cows grass fed and they are uh, they put through a method for like 72 hours where they sort of really slowly let the bones like melt and there's no high pressure cleaning. There's a lot of bone broth where not high pressure cleaning, but high pressure power to get rid of like antibiotics and, and bad bacteria and stuff. Right. They don't get high pressure therapy. They don't get heat therapy. So they heat it up too much, gets rid of all the nutrients. Then none of that's all slow. That's why it's done for 72 hours. And they use all the marrow, they use all the bones. And mm. I was reading this on the back of the label, like, no, like this is so good. So like I contacted, <laughs> I ended up contacting the guy and like talking to him about it. Cause I was just buying so much. And I was like, is there a way? Cause all my friends are, are like everyone that I know is buying it now. Cause I'm just, I'm just preaching it. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, yeah, dude, we'll set you up with some like good stuff and jumped on board as like an ambassador and stuff for him. Which yeah. Really cool. Sick. So I was like, that was a cool opportunity. But in general, every single person without a word of a lie, because I like to practice fasting as well to reset your gut and give, us, give you, your gut a chance to heal. <laughs> because as you mentioned beforehand, when you make a real bad food decision or if you drink alcohol or if you, you eat something that's not even suited to your DNA, you put just a little, little hole in your gut, as you mentioned beforehand, leaky gut, mm -hmm. which essentially if everyone's listening, not sure what actually happens. Leaky gut basically means that your gut doesn't, it's not going to digest the food and food's going to get straight into your bloodstream. So it's not going to get broken down and absorbed into your body. It'll get straight to your bloodstream and it allows your immune system to attack all of the shit that's in the food. How does that show up? That shows up literally as like inflammation, which you can track on a blood glucose because your glucose is going to spike like crazy because your immune system's gone up to fight away all of the shit. So you can literally track that which is insane <laughs> so but yeah in terms of fixing it i like fasting so your body because obviously if you got like a, a cut right you're not going to rub how so, long how long i don't know it's i literally i would have no idea but uh, in terms of how long fasting or fasting. how long to fasting fix? oh yeah so i'll always do when i fast i do a 24-hour fast i'll always just go like a whole 24 hours about food but a lot of the time what i call enhanced fasting stolen from ben greenfield is i'll put in bone broth because like it's, it's going to take away some of the autophagy anti-aging benefits from fasting but it's going to heal your gut it's going to line your gut it's going to because bone broth it just it just put basically puts a layer over all of the villi in your in, in your gut and then allows those like it protects protects your gut from everything that's like trying to anything bad that's trying to protect it and it really allows it to heal so bone broth is quite fantastic because it's so nutrient and mineral dense it's like it's kind of like, you know, if you get cut and then you put like a little bit of salt into it to clear all the bacteria and then it heals up pretty well. That's sort of mm. what like bone broth does to the inside of your stomach if it's damaged. Um, if not, then it's just going to layer it and protect it. So it's a really good chance to do that. Your body is really good at burning through fats because it's had a little bit of fat. So, and it's quite an experience if you're on a fast and you do have some bone broth because those minerals get straight to your brain and you're like, like ketosis happens and you feel like you've just taken drugs. You're like, Oh man, this is so fantastic. I feel so good right now. Like it's insane. But every single person that I've coached or got onto bone broth, I would say within a week, two weeks of taking it first time people taste it. They're like, Oh, this is a little bit different. And then the more they taste it, the next minute they come addicted to it. And they're just <laughs> sorting out like, Dude, I never thought I'd be addicted to bone broth, but like I literally can't live without it now. And it's like, well, your body's gotten so used to all the nutrients and minerals that I believe, this is just a personal opinion, that, it, that, that, that your brain makes it taste good because it's like, wow, this is so good. Because at first, when you first have, you're like, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Second time, third, fourth time, you're like, whoa, I crave this. And it makes you crave it because it knows that it's so good and mineral nutrient like dense. Like if you, if you track your food and you use, a program like my fitness power chronometer and you can actually see the like nutrient profile on something or if you just want to have a look like what is the minerals in there like in terms of how your salts go for the day if you take one serving of bone broth like the good the gooey stuff it just sends everything way out of whack like too far on the scale you're like what's going on here 
But then I always think like, well, you can't really trust the scales, right? Because they're like an average for what we should be having. We should be having a lot more high quality minerals and it's all there in the bone broth, man. So I know that was a long winded way yeah. of explaining why you should get on some, but I've given you every single excuse. Yeah, no, for guess. real. <laughs> Can, what if, uh, do they send it to the States? Yeah, you'd have to look. I, you know, you'd say fingers crossed. Um, I'm pretty sure that they, they would because they've been working on a bunch of stuff. So Best of the Bone is the brand. Okay. best of the bone bone broth and they have a website called herbal doctors or the herbal doctors and you can use um cory 12 and you get 12 percent off which is really cool um if not man for you specifically contact me and i'll just send you a big old box brother and, and you just be like Whoa, yeah. This stuff is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm like yes the goo is here <laughs> the goo is here yeah dude you gotta experience it it's, it's insane so yeah Okay, so we've talked about our first brain, second brain. Now let's talk about the third brain. No fap. Talk to me. <laughs> oh, dude, what am I talking about? I haven't masturbated in a year. That's what's going down. So, yeah. So yeah. for someone listening, they probably male or female would be like, whoa, what? You have yeah, what? Dude. Everyone that I talk about, it's like, I'm like, God, oh, dude. So, I haven't I haven't masturbated in 12 months and have all this energy and they're like well maybe you should have a wank and calm down <laughs> <laughs> i'm like you win this that, round buddy you win this round that is fun <laughs> yeah you need to chill out <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like oh man no so well it started at the end of a relationship breakup where i just found out like you know i had this beautiful girlfriend and i was like i was masturbating all the time yeah but we were in a bad way we knew we weren't gonna work out we kind of kept trying to and we just kept delaying conversations because like oh when we're we gonna have this conversation right, right. We, we tried our best to make it work but it just wasn't gonna happen because we just i was going that way she was going that way so we're like mm -hmm. fair enough um so it was a little bit in that period between the breakup where it's just a little bit like ah, yeah. a little bit of a little bit of frustration there and i was like well i feel rude to be having sex with her now and like that's a little bit like we're, where yeah. we know we're breaking up so like that's not gonna happen and throughout that period, and even before that, I was just like masturbating all the time. And as just a, just being a man in general, so yeah. from a guy's point of view, like we grow up eight years old, man, eight, 10 years old. I was looking at titties on Google. I was <laughs> looking at porn, all this shit. I remember the first time I masturbated, I was like 11 years old, nothing even come out. Like, and like, God damn. And like, yeah, so no, it's crazy to talk about, but like, that's what happened. That's the reality. That's the truth of it. If you get like real, real raw of it, like that's what we yeah. do. Like, and as guys, like uh, I'm sure we can all like admit, like a majority of us, well, I don't know about us people in Australia, it's like we have been really horny. You've masturbated sometimes in toilets, like when you're growing up as kids, you'd fucking either be caught by your parents or something awkward situations happen, like masturbating all the time. And it's like, mm -hmm. fair enough, that's part of um, growing up. But no. in this period where it was happening, I was like, man, something that I really noticed to myself with the, the people that I listened to, the people that I respected, the people that I researched, a lot of like book writers and stuff. I just, I remember them hearing and John Ray, John Gray speaking about it. Like all of these synchronicity happen at once, right? To all just tell me to quit it. And I've just been thinking about like writers that say we'd naturally become celibate because we're so focused on a project. Every time I was compare, uh, competing in a fitness show, I remember saying to someone at work once, I was like, dude, I haven't masturbated in like a month and a half. And he was like, what? He was like, dude, it's there. It's there. What are you talking about? I was like, dude, I just haven't want, I just, I just haven't. <laughs> I was like, maybe I haven't wanted to. I just can't be bothered. And I just haven't. So he was like, dude, that's like so strange. I'm like, yeah, I know. So anyway, things clicked yeah. after some period of time after being like, you know, authors naturally become celibate when they're writing or like business people when they're focusing on a goal. I listened to a podcast of John Gray talking about how he spent a lot of his time. He's an author of Mars Venus, by the way. And he spent a lot of time. He's early 20s and he was nine years celibate and i was like well, wow. what right and that was his monk journey because he did like a lot of monk studies throughout this period and they said like one of the main things is to learn him to control that energy and he talks about he talks about it all the time now in terms of how he has a lot of sex and he's great sex with his wife and you know it took a long period like obviously when he was younger to get there listen to a couple of ben greenfield podcasts had people talking about like men should be masturbating every day i started looking into mantak chia and him talking about like different sex experiences and men like not ejaculating while they're having sex. I started listening to David Dieter's books, Way of Superior Man, Enlightened Sex, and a couple of others, which Enlightened Sex, there's, there's two there. There's one that's all about sex and there's one that's about like masculine and feminine. I read the masculine and the feminine one. And he, he talked about like 
withdrawing from um, ejaculating and all of these things can happen at once. I got obsessed with it because I'm like, what the hell is going on with this? And I was like, well, if for me personally, if I've been like naturally celibate before, well, not, not celibate because that's away from having sex. For me, it was like for focusing on something during that period of time and I'm focusing for a competition is when I'm like at the best version of myself and I'm crushing stuff. I'm disciplined. I'm getting things done. And then after that period is done, man, if I'm, if I have a girlfriend at that time or when I have been part with, with a partner beforehand, we would have the best experience for the couple of weeks afterwards. Like we'd have the best sex. We'd have the best fun. We'd have, it's just, it was just so blissful because it's just been like such a period of time, like, you know, going without being so focused that you're actually celebrating something. So it was like, oh my God, this is amazing. So for me, when I first did, I was like, well, I'm single now. I've been masturbating like crazy. I'm not motivated to talk to any girls. Um, I'm not motiva- motivated to get like just shit, ju- shit done in general. The best version of myself probably wouldn't be masturbating because they'd be too busy focused on what they need to do. So I was like, well, if I want to figure out what I need to do and to get focused, maybe I should do all of the other stuff the best version of myself would be doing and then i'll figure it out so i was like all right that was one done gone from then i was just like i'm just gonna i'm just gonna quit it i think like forever so i just made that decision and went boom i'm just gonna quit it and everything started working out really well i got so much more motivated to find girls and like talk to girls um as not for the fact of oh i'm gonna go out and get girls but like my whole perception chain like no i want a wife like and a good one and i'm so fussy now when it comes to talking to certain girls who talk to so many, went on the dating apps and I was like, no, no. no you want real connection. Period, yeah. You want a real connection, man. And during this period of time, you're looking at what your ex is doing and whatever she's happening, you're like, oh, moved on, done whatever. And that period, you feel this pressure like, oh, I need to like, well, I don't know about other people, but I've like growing up, I've been like, well, I need to be doing what they're doing because like I'm competitive. And if she's out there moving on, then I need to be moving on too. Then I was like, no, because the right one hasn't like rocked yeah. up yet. So like, hell no, man, like protect your shit. And so I'm a, so much more motivated now to not just like, not just have sex and for the experience of having sex, because it's sort of like you're just masturbating with another human, right? Where it's, and it's not even like the connection side of things. Yes, but it's also to have just really good sex in general. <laughs> like, And you're not going to have really good sex unless you're, really attracted to someone and if you're really attracted to someone you know that it's going to be a lot harder to pick them up than someone that's like not really attracted so you have to put in the works and instead of aiming for a one night stand aiming for something else you know that this is going to take me three months of consistent like trying to get through to this like girl in terms for anything happening And it's so much better, like the whole courting experience, the flirting, the everything in between, like the having fun, the getting to know each other, having some like personal experiences, like builds up this huge pressure. And then when you do actually finally have sex, it's like amazing. I'm like, oh my God, I'm having some of like the best sex. Oh my life, this is absolutely wild. Why have I not done this before? And in terms of just like getting steps to finding and getting clear on, you know, the the exact person that's like going to be perfect for you is well for me i always feel like each of us like deserve it if we put our mind and attention to it right whatever we focus on we manifest we receive if you do have the dreams of like finding someone that's perfect for you um it'll definitely happen if you are high quality enough of yourself to bring that person in i was listening to something i can't remember whose podcast it was on but from my own my own opinion it was like if you think about the person that you really want to be with it's sort of like be their match <laughs> like be as good as like that person's going as mm. the, what you ideal on that person and you will be able to attract that person in um so currently i've been doing that and it's been it's been working out really well so in terms of actually like finding a partner having like really good sex so much better however during that period of time for a short period of time once you quit masturbating uh, and looking at porn and, and all of the above you, you go through a certain period of time where it's like you're constantly fighting urges and you're aware of them for a while and they come up like crazy. And for me, that's like with all the research that I've been doing in like books like The History of Origins and Consciousness and um, um, Man and His Symbols, Carl Jung and a couple of other different like spiritual books is they say, obviously like libido is your creative energy and libido mm. isn't just sex energy. Libido means all creative energy, right? It means all creative energy. It's not just sex energy. Sex is just one of the parts that increase your libido. And 
my creative ability, my mindset, my focus, my clarity just went through the roof. And like heart rate variability started going up, better decisions started going up, got real clear with everything that I wanted to do. And I'm like, so this is why when, when you're not ejaculating and you're not masturbating all the time is why you have the energy to actually get out and get a high quality girl <laughs> is because you have the energy to focus and plan and go around all of the different things to be able to go out there and get it. <laughs> so, yeah. so it made a lot of sense to me. And it's like, well, if we can apply this to our business, if we can apply this to um, our self-development, then like what's, what's going to happen. Mm. And like in my personal experience has been quite fantastic. Everything's like really started to skyrocket. And one really important thing that I just want to touch on with the, with the, with the no fat thing. Cause I know this is quite bizarre for people listening, but one thought that I had recently was, and I also with the no fat thing, whilst I am, if I do have a sexual partner or I'm seeing someone or I have a girlfriend for a period of time is I won't ejaculate all the time. I'll try to once a week, once every two weeks, once a month. However, that's hard and you do fail, but I'm like, well, this is, this is a journey. This is a process. <laughs> I'm going to get good at it. That is my intention. And I'm going to get good at it. Right. And there's definitely a whole bunch of techniques um, for that, which I haven't learned yet, but I plan on it. So, but one thing that I think is really important is it's very quite obvious. If you do quit porn and you do quit fapping is the energy you receive is out of control mm. to plan, create, get something done. And a lot of the time, what I've noticed for men in particular is when they are masturbating or ejaculating all the time, it's like a comfort wank. Oh, I'm bored. And instead of eating a donut, it's like, oh, I'm just going to have a wank and I'll feel a bit better. And when I think about it, I'm like, that's like quite the opposite of alpha. It's like you're giving in to something and you're not choosing it. Back to the Frederick Nietzsche thing. That's like, that's a, that's a camel instinct, man. <laughs> like wow. like if, yeah. you're, if you're being like lazy, you feel like, well, I need to get this done or it's nighttime or it's a couple of times a week, whatever. Every single night, if you're just like, oh, I'm going to masturbate. It makes me feel better. helps me relax. It's like, well, you know what else helps people relax? Like Xanax. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> straight up weed, like it really wow. does. So yeah. like there's, there's, if you're doing it for that reason, you're essentially using it like a drug. And if we take a little mm. bit of reverence and put a little bit of sacred on something that's so amazing, right? if you think about it, just, just to be aware, really aware of and um, just put some gratitude around like the experience of how intense like a, a like an ejaculation is is like okay there's a reason why this is so good and there's a reason why when you ejaculate dopamine gets released from your brain in, in in bounds and ways and there's a reason why if you have crazy sex with someone that you're really attracted to why the dopamine release is ridiculous and you want to have that again so i believe this is a thought that i've become been thinking about recently is that we have so much of this creation ability to build something of worth to women because like as a man, because this can, this can definitely go both ways, but I'm speaking at the moment of in terms of a man from what I've researched. Uh, majority of women, one of researchers is John Gray and David Dieter stuff, not my stuff. <laughs> so I'm just saying is that women find men attractive who can provide safety, security, and have the ability to climb hierarchical ladders and like achieve success yeah. right that's i think why, it's accurate yeah right? accurate right that's attractive so men when they get older because they start to experience success and stuff as they get older in business and they can actually provide things is they feel like that's why they seem a lot more attractive and as a guy you feel a lot more attractive now let's put this into uh, perspective let's just say over a certain period of time you give in to all of these comfort wanks and you're not in your best energy and you haven't used anything to create anything, right? Is you're not going to attract that person. And as a guy, you're going to be like, well, how am I ever going to have a family? Because I can't trust myself because like I keep giving into these small things. But let's say, for example, you create something amazing. You use all of this energy and the steps along the way is like you've, you've created something, you've made something of worth, something of value, you have and and you've and you've completed it and it's of value not just of you but to other people can see it like women you've not just validated like to them you've also validated to yourself your ability to be like a good dad and to populate right because you've just you've just done something created something which is given so much worth to yourself like success or whatever it is that you've created and now it is like the best time for you to pre-populate a jacked and want to have like 
sex. This is used in terms of how I was thinking of the authors, how they become naturally celibate for, for their period of time. They all talked about whilst they're writing a book, didn't want to have sex, didn't want to ejaculate, they're too focused. But as soon as they finished, the same way as me is after I finished a, a competition, it's like, fuck, all I want to do is have sex right now. Like, this is crazy. But because you've gone through that period of restraining and creating and doing something, you've stuck to your word. You've now just validated to yourself that you deserve to have sex and you deserve to populate and like actually be, you know, validated as a dad, like if that's your goal. Um, but that's what I've been thinking about. And that's it, the more I think about it, the more it makes sense to me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh man, like this is, it's working. It's working yeah. for me. So <laughs> no, I love it. I think it makes plenty of sense because there is a, if everything, and I think this is like the ebbs and flows of life, right? If everything was just handed to you and given to you and, and you got everything you wanted for every step of the way, and you never had to work for anything, there would be a lot less satisfaction when you got there, wherever right. there is. If it rained every single, if it like, it was sunny every day outside, like, you know, and then it rained a couple of times, you're like, oh, wow, rain's kind of like nice and relaxing, you know, but if it's raining all the time, like when the sun comes out, finally, you're like, oh, this is incredible, right? So I think it's the same concept. Like you are going to be so much more satisfied, fulfilled, happy with yourself and with the work that you did put in when you know that you went through the valley to get to the mountain. Like you had to carry that shit on your back. You had to, you know, fall down and scrape your legs a bunch of times because when you get to the top, you can look back and say, Look how much I grew from these experiences. Like, look how much better I am. And especially when you talk about something as sacred as sex, like you are, there's so much energy and, and things like within, within that sacred act. Right. I think, I think it really is, but it's been thrown at us from so many different ways through porn, through media, through Instagram models, through like Hollywood you know, as, as, as something that isn't sacred anymore. Right. And so, yeah, no, I totally agree. That's, that's awesome. And good for you for, for speaking up about it. Cause I think it's important. It's, it's good stuff. It's real yeah, good stuff. We're really going to talk about it a lot. And thank you for saying that as well. Cause I didn't yeah. actually think of that, you know, like, like going through the valley to actually get to the reward in the end. Yeah. As you said that it makes a lot of sense as, uh, as Jordan Peterson talks about like the old school Meso, I think it was the Mesopotamian mm -hmm. empire, whatever it was. It was like the king at the end of every single year would get dragged out in front of the people and like basically beaten up before he go back into the um, kingdom. And that was just to like humble him, right? Because if someone is at the top all the time doing all the things, what, what is a very common experience, you see it in, in, mythologi in mythological terms, if someone's at the top being born there as they burn everything down. And that's even spoken up in the Buddha stories. Wow. Like when Buddha yeah. was, he, he was the king, he was an emperor and uh, and like he was like that didn't he didn't even know what old age was like he didn't know what sickness was until he went outside the walls this is like all the myths and stuff he went outside the walls and the experience and he was like i need to get out of this palace man like i hate all these riches and then went out and you know become a buddha so right no yeah, yeah it, it makes, makes it makes sense it really does make sense and it's, and it's tough to do and as a guy i can tell you right now is like when you talk about this stuff where you make a commitment to it because some of the guys that i coach originally i was like no nah, i'm not going to coach on this stuff i'm just trying it myself and my clients were just too fascinated and they were just like let's do this like i'm gonna stop what is crazy just for people to know is that the guys who have like quit masturbating and quit ejaculating as frequently their partners have thanked me they're like our sex is so much better he's so much more present at first for girls. It's like, Oh, I'm not doing that. Like, Oh, crazy. I've every single person, their partners have thanked me straight away. Wow. <laughs> like, yeah, so much. Presence, Incredible. So much yeah. Incredible. Dude, yeah. It, it, is, it is nuts. And I've been like, uh, you're welcome. <laughs> you turn into a fit, fitness and relationship coach. Now <laughs> <laughs> oh, we do a bunch of everything. We sort of figure out like a whole bunch of stuff, but it, it, yeah. it's used. It's used to like optimize yourself, right. And put yourself into like some really good energy. But there was something else I was going to say and I completely forgot. It was important, but. Can you think of it? Nope. Okay, well, we've talked about so much stuff. I do want to talk about one more thing, though, because I think it's a good, I think it's a good way to end. Um, I specifically saved that for the end. So the real one's got that juicy content right there. So the real one's got it. We were like an hour in. I was like, all right, now's the time. The real ones are still listening. <laughs> 
So remember, guys, you got to listen through if you want the real juicy stuff. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so true. But um, so in in your blogs, by the way, people go read go read the blogs, CoreyBowell.com. But in the blogs, um, you talk about living with danger in your life, like a healthy danger. This might have been on your Instagram, actually. Um, but living with healthy danger. And you kind of had a short little monologue on. I just thought it was so, you know. I thought it was really profound because, you know, a lot of times I talk about, you know, not being afraid of failure, uh, you know, having a healthy relationship with failure, having a healthy relationship with putting yourself out there, being vulnerable. I think danger is almost the same thing because we look at we look at that as a danger zone. Like, I don't want to step over here because of this, this and this. Like, I'm afraid of this, this and this. So that technically is like living, um, you know, not wanting to step your foot in danger. And you like talked about, I'll let you do this, but he talked about like asking your buddy, like when's the last time that you've done something dangerous, right? So like ex expand on that for me because I thought this was really profound. Cool. Well, firstly, thank you so much for reading that and actually yeah. pointing that out because I strongly believe in this. This is like sort of one of the things that like, like honestly, bro, like thank you so much for reading that and, and actually yeah. getting something out of that and taking that in. Like yeah. it's close to my heart, that is. Um so essentially I read the book wild at heart and I read the book boy crisis and reflecting on my own experiences was very apparent that in terms of masculine fulfillment, you can sort of split things up as one theory. You can split things up into three different areas, purpose, beauty, and danger. Purpose is like your purpose that you want to like that you find and you want to do, uh, danger is the thrill that comes along with that and then a beauty is most of the time majority of the time it's a partner to fight for and and if you if it's not a partner to fight for we well, find it in some other aesthetics where it could be like painting or it could be some sort of feminine thing poetry whatever it is because you see it's like or like being a monk something like that people will get their beauty out of that but but i'd say the majority of people it's always going to be like uh, like like a partner so in terms of those three what i find is that danger is one of the most like it's one of those beautiful ones because just to quickly explain the theory if you're too much too focused on your purpose you neglect everything else and you become that guy at the age of 50 or something that's been like you know you've got the most successful business ever but your wife's left you this has left all these other things and you're like oh what's going on god damn or you haven't found fulfillment you're like oh, i haven't achieved a balance for those, if they focus on beauty too much, like let's say it's for a girl or a partner and you focus or they become your purpose, they become unattracted to you because they realize that they're your purpose and that's too much responsibility to bear and then they'll piss off. A really good example is if like as a guy, if you're having a, if you're talking to your partner and you're having like a, an argument about something and let's just say, let's run the example. Let's say you guys wanted to go out for dinner one night and you guys couldn't get in, but then someone from your work booked a dinner. Now you guys are going out for a work dinner and you're not going with your partner. And she's just been like, oh man, I really want to go. And you're like, that's okay. I'll just book in. We'll, we'll go in two weeks from now instead. That's okay. We'll do that. Oh, no, nah, blah, blah, blah. And talk and like going over those different things. And then if you're like, no, nah, it's all right. She will always say, no, that's fine. That's okay. She never wanted to actually go to that place she just wanted to talk about her feelings and how annoying it was and you've just tried to solve and fix the problem and you've kept putting her as a priority she said no because she knows that if she does go that's her giving in to you rushing around trying to fix everything which is not like you could say it's the, it's not positive masculinity <laughs> yeah. she's always going to say no she always be like no no let's that's fine like all good she just wanted to talk about the feelings she didn't want you to fix the thing so it's like if you're constantly clinging and doing yeah. like those things for a long period of time and always chasing she'll eventually go oh my god like go away um and piss off which happened to me in one of my relationships like um an a on ago <laughs> and i remember i was like oh reflecting on that i was like that's what i did i was like i was way too focused on her and everything else i get it and then the other one, which is what we're talking about, is the danger. I had to explain those other things for danger because you can also get too wrapped up in danger. I find that men specifically, when we are, like, let's say if you get into jujitsu, you get into MMA fighting, you get into training too hard, you get into marathon running, you get addicted to, like, video games, drugs, violence, alcohol. All of those things are dangerous, man. Like, video games all the time, you're experiencing dangers, you're killing people. Ah, oh, it's fucking violent there. You're taking drugs, right? You're just like, oh, like, 
people taking drugs like how many can you take how many you take oh same thing with drinking right it's how how fucked up we're we gonna get tonight Ugh, it's dangerous you can end up in hospital right it's uh, uh, same thing with drugs all of those things are like super dangerous or fighting let's go out fight. you don't know what's going to happen but as a man like we're supposed to be dan- dancing on the end of danger like danger means like i say death and distraction as well are included in there like a sort of the, the d for danger has a few other things and it, it does it shows up in all these different ways but in terms of using it healthily for yourself and honing that energy is extremely important but we always got to be like dancing on the deck could be gambling like people like danger mm, through, yeah. through through gambling as well yeah. but if you think tribally at years and years ago when we would go hunt for food right like that was our main purpose to bring food and provide for the people it was like well what was that that was dangerous that was super dangerous we go out for weeks on end trying to hunt some animal that could kill us if we, I, I think about this every time I see a spider or something in Australia, crazy spiders everywhere. I'm like, that thing, if that, if that bit me, then we didn't have the antidote, like, I'd be fucked. <laughs> Squish. But like, yeah. you can hardly, you can hardly see them when they're in the garden. If you're in a shed or a house or something, you can see the spiders and stuff everywhere. But when you're in a garden, you can hardly see it. I was like, imagine like thousands of years ago, just walking throughout the woods, or whatever, trying to hunt something. Yeah. But it's not just you're killing that. There's spiders and shit everywhere. There's snakes and stuff. Like, you don't know what's going on. Like if you hurt yourself, or you hurt a knee or twist an ankle like you do now, so like, oh, drive to the hospital, get sorted out. Back then it's like, if you're a thousand kilometers away from, from the tribe, man, you're out. See you later. Like dead. And there's a really good story talked about in Wild at Heart where they were talking about this older guy and they were t- he, was t- he was telling a story where he was stuck on the ocean and he was in a storm and there was just like a sailboat and it was just crazy, ridiculous. It was him and like two friends and they were stuck out there and they got back somehow. And they said, anyway, they almost like tipped over and almost died. And it was like, man, I never felt more alive. And that put, puts to you like when you're in like a, like a college football game and it's crazy and it's dangerous and you guys are out on the field just flips and just battling into each other right and there's the yeah. girls i find it like i can understand why girls sometimes like why do you guys do those sports it's crazy with mma fighting like, there's a good chance that you can yeah. die doing that it's addicting right and it's fun and it's a thrill and you're out there just like ugh, pushing your body to the limits pushing your mind to the limit. how far can i push how far can i push that's like super masculine and if you don't have an outlet for that it'll show up in distraction or something healthy whether it be drugs alcohol violence whether it be like actually turning into a sloth video games because you're like, you know, you're not excited to do anything with it. And how I, how I like to talk about it is, well, if you haven't got that danger and that thrill, it's going to show up. And it has so many times people that I've coached, people that have helped is it shows up just somewhere in their life negatively. And a lot of the time when, when you, like, people are talking about their problems, uh, it just come down to like, do you get any danger? Because people don't anymore. Or like, where do you get it from? And they're like, oh God, ask guys that. Ask them like, where do you get your danger from? And they're like, Ugh, I don't know. <laughs> I used yeah. to, when I was a kid, I used to do motorbike riding. That was fun as, and it was like, well, we should be doing something thrilling. But what I like to do is yeah. put it into your work life as well. Like for me, for example, like sometimes these podcasts getting super vulnerable, like me talking about, like my balls and masturbating and stuff. Like if, before I talk about that, right? Every time I'm like, here we go. <laughs> like, I get real raw here, like talking about all the stuff and like, you know, the porn that we used to watch and all the crazy shit that we used to do, like talking about that's like qu- quite dangerous because people judge you and, or, or you think that they're going to judge you for it. a lot of the time that they're like, wow, thank you for sharing. That was me. Yeah. No, no, exactly. thank you, and, and thank you for that. And other times it could be getting on stage and, and, and being like, but naked in front of thousands of people, right? Like basically when I'm competing or that could be public speaking or that could be pushing yourself and finding the absolute limits for some sort of physical challenge. But to be aware of that danger swings two ways. One, in the terms of like a distraction and you're not honing it somewhere healthy or you're putting it somewhere healthy, like a sport or a practice, but you're not taking into consideration purpose or a beauty. And you're just like, no, I'm just going to do this, do this, do this, do this. I'm just going to constantly like practice my sport, practice my profession, blah, blah, blah. And then you've just left everything else. And then you feel like, no, I wish I found my actual purpose and put it in between instead of just been doing this because everyone knows of like, I'm not sure if everyone knows, but from my personal uh, opinion is we all hear about the the poor athlete is what I hear about or the, the bodybuilder who can't pay for all his food and stuff like that. And it's like, well, he's just gone 
screw all the troubles that I need to deal with mentally. I'm just going to go train in the gym and that'll make me feel better. Like, yeah, it'll make you feel better, but you're not facing anything. So in terms of danger, there's a lot to think about for it. And there's a lot of different avenues. And I've talked about a few things there, like holistically for, for what they sort of show up in your life. And for anyone who's listening, I hope they've just triggered like what I mentioned, just something in there has triggered a part for you when you've just sort of had a little reflection and gone, oh, I did that. Or, or I know someone who does that. Just so that you can think about it to eventually get that reflection on yourself to be mm. like, hmm, maybe I need to make a little bit of a shift here. Or yeah. how, even better, how can I include a little bit of danger into my life or a thrill to get something like more out of it? So one of my clients is extremely successful and we're still trying to figure out like where he can get his thrill from because like in terms of business success and entrepreneurial, he's done it, he's made it, he's landed. He, does, he wouldn't have to work another day in his life if he wanted to. He lives his lifestyle that, he loves and it's like the best thing ever but in terms of like the danger he's like well what's next like i need to do something to fill me up and we're like well we got to find that because like it keeps showing up and all these different temptations that are moving you away from like your purpose so how can we like put it all in together so we're constantly talking about that at the moment so yeah Yeah, i hope that triggered someone man i hope that triggered something for you i hope um yeah so yeah no it's uh it definitely does you know i think back i was talking to someone about this the other day like I remember my football coach telling me, you know, you better enjoy this because this is the only time that you'll be able to legally assault people. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, wow, that kind of like, it kind of triggered like, well, like that's true. Like before the game, like all the butterflies in your stomach, the feeling that, you know, is so irreplaceable. Like you can't clone that feeling before the game where you're filled with adrenaline. You went through the valley of training and just, you know, beating yourself to the ground over and over, you know, and and then now you're finally there. All the fans are there. You know, you're in the heat of the moment and your your spine is tingling like after you crack somebody. Like that that like almost seems barbaric, right? But it's that primal, it's that danger, like it's that feeling um and I, I love how you relate it back to like, if you're not getting the healthy dose, I think that if everybody could relate to this, if you're not getting the healthy dose of danger, and I think it goes for men specifically, but women too. I mean, if, if you're not getting the healthy dose of danger, like you will try and fill it with other things. And I think that's the same way with, with like a lot of things in life, dude, like my big things are, you know, my big three. And I know that you definitely pour into all these cups is mental, physical, spiritual. Like, I think if one of those is lacking, you know, you're going to feel an imbalance there. Like if you're, if you're like super into the spiritual side of things, but you're not, you know, taking care of your body and your fitness, then your mind's going to suffer. And then if your mind's suffering, you know, your relationships and other things may suffer as well. Your work, so I think that all three of those play off of each other so well, but dude, I love it. I think that's so good. The danger thing. I'll, I'll definitely keep that with me for sure. No, oh, thank you so, so much. For that, man. Yeah. Good. Corey, man, dude, we could, we're going to have to run this back at, at some <laughs> point. So guys buckle in cause we're having round two, but uh, I think I just need to come to Australia. Once these regulations lift, I have actually have a couple of friends in Australia. Um, our school is like big, big rugby like number like number one or number two in the nation every single year so all the boys were either you know south africa australia new zealand um you know all over the place so it it was that was super cool because i got to make friends that are everywhere and so i need to come dude i need to come to the gold coast <laughs> yeah, dude, i need to come i that need to wild. but thank you so much for coming on Corey. tell everybody where they can find you um tell everybody if they're interested in coaching, if they want to check out the podcast, the supplements, all of it. Well, firstly, if anyone's interesting in, uh, interested in coaching, I think they should like send you a message, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, honestly, I think you got a lot to give, yeah. man. You got a big, gift, a good gift, good gift to give, yeah, and I you're super it. well read, and you know, but and you know a whole bunch of stuff. So, like, I think I you're quite it. fantastic. And um, if anyone is interested in anything, I think firstly, they should contact you. Secondly, if they are interested in me, like you can get a whole bunch, like I, I, all of the stuff that I research and figure out and put in with my coaching and helping just some like crazy elite people as I put 
all of it into my own podcast and the blogs on my website. So my own podcast is, I've actually changed it now. It's the Corey Boutwell podcast. I've changed okay. it for that one. The website is coreyboutwell.com and on Instagram is Corey Boutwell. So Simple. <laughs> any of that, and you should be able to find me on some of the stuff. Um, mm. I also have just started running like free live events. So if anyone's interested in those, please just DM me on Instagram. Interested mm. in any of the programs, please just DM me program and you should be able to find anything. And if you want to understand more about the stuff that we do or the company that I help you know, optimize people and, and crush their lives with is um, Eternum Labs. So you can go to eternumlabs.com.au or I'm pretty sure we've just got released American at the moment too. So it's eternumlabs.com to check out all of those wild supplements I'm creating and putting together a whole bunch of supplements myself. So um, some quite wild, some quite wild stuff in there, dude. I'm excited. I'm the excited. Next couple that, of months and some gnarly yeah. shit coming out. So I'm, I'm really excited for that. So. That's one of those things that I've always thought. Like, I think we're the same in that we've tried like so many different things, you know, for performance and like optimization. But I'm like, dude, I wish, I wish this like, I wish this, this hydration existed. or like yeah. this blood flow. Like I'm over here, like taking, <laughs> but I learned about, but Tim Ferriss, um, you know, he had, you know, I don't know. I'm sure you've listened to his podcast. Haven't, yeah. So, I mean, he had, a. am pretty sure it was him that did the supplement company. And he's like, I was in college, you know, I was into fitness and doing this and that. So I just remember having like all these different powders, like sitting around my room and I'm just, I'm thinking like, dang, that's me. Like I got <laughs> root and like honey and like s s himalayan sea salt over here i'm like putting like 17 different things into dude. a shaker like dude just, 100%. Yeah. making potions but it's funny that you yeah. said hydration and blood flow because i'm literally making a supplement at the moment and yeah. it's it's specifically for hydration and blood flow and i did so much research into like what the best ingredients were to figure out like the best quality stuff and i think we're going to release it in a couple weeks like two three weeks um for, i'm ready for I'm it so excited yeah we just got us like um distribution too so you guys can actually order it and receive it um so. and you get a disc you type in Corey with an e and you get a discount of 10 percent off which is dope but um yeah so look out for that one man because i can't wait when i was like we just got to test a few of the different blends and i was talking to my business partner and i, I sent a few blends and i was like I want this ASAP. <laughs> I was like, let's get them to send them. You're like, this is sick. <laughs> this is going to be wild. Like, yeah. so. No, that's awesome. Okay. So I got to get the bone broth, the gooey, yeah. the gooey, ooey, and then I got to get the <laughs> blood flow. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be, I'm going to be killing it. <laughs> yeah. Well, sick, man. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in to another episode. As always, use something that you, you know, learn today, utilize it. It's great to feel motivated and hear these things, but go put it into action. If you like today's episode, share it with a friend. If you think it could help somebody, share it with a friend. Even if it's just a little snippet, say, hey, go listen to this 10 minutes. You know, I know we did a long, long show today, but man, so much good stuff. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, go hit that purple subscribe button, leave us a rating and tell us what you thought about the show or reach out to me or Corey helps push us forward and keep this thing growing for you guys. So thank you so much for tuning in to another episode. Corey, you're the man and y'all have a good one. Thank you so much. Have a good one, everyone.